Good morning. Uh, good asset management is one of the cornerstones of a healthy economy. Uh, we have with us today Borno Yanukovych, who is responsible for the business of for growing the business of Franklin Templeton in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, welcome. Um, you're originally from Croatia, I understand. Yes, yes, I'm from Croatia, and I'm now 13 years here in Poland. Really? And you've been living in Warsaw the whole yes. time? Okay. In the south of Warsaw. In the south of Warsaw. Great. Um, what is the outlook for the growth of the Polish asset management industry? If we look at the, the Polish asset management industry, we today are back at the asset levels of 2016. So the industry has been growing and then it dropped from there. The reason for this was uh, various scandals of Polish local asset managers. So people have not been getting the promised returns, deliveries on their products. And therefore, people have withdrawn the money from the industry. So you said scandals? Yes. Uh -huh. Various scandals where entrepreneur-run asset managers mm -hmm. have been front-running, tweaking the returns so they get better returns, but when clients wanted their money back, they couldn't get their money back. So but is that a minority of the industry? It is a minority, but you know, one black sheep then causes all the other sheep to look a little bit black as well. Okay. And then nowadays, uh, people are very cautious about investing. And I think over time, they will now start not just to look at promised returns, they will start to look also who are they giving the money to. And I think that's very good for the industry because I think we need good risk management, we need solid um, companies so that mm -hmm. people can trust the market again. Okay, so in Poland, what, what opportunities exist for asset managers and also for people who want to invest their money in, in the assets? I mean, for asset managers per se, um, it's a big opportunity because we only have a little, I think, over 2 million accounts in Poland, which means out of 38 million people, we only have 2 million accounts. This is a very small number. So funds or asset management are not perceived as an instrument for retirement saving, saving your money, building up wealth. And I think that's like the joke with the shoemaker who comes to the island where nobody wears shoes. Mm -hmm. I think we are at the island where nobody is wearing the shoes. Okay. So on the one hand you can say nobody wears shoes so I go back or you can say nobody wears shoes and we have a big you know, sure. opportunity. But two million to me sounds like quite a lot. I mean what is, let's say, for a country like Germany or, or UK or France, I mean, what might be the number of accounts? 10% would be 3.8 million. So we are like at 5%. But there are countries which are 30, 40, 50 percent. Mm -hmm. So the, that's the opportunity for growth. Okay. But above, I mean, what, what opportunities, what, what assets are the, are, for an asset manager, um, what, what are you looking to place money in? What, what sort of thing? Oh. So we, as a global asset manager, would always say to clients, you should not put all your eggs in one basket. So diversify your portfolio. Mm -hmm. We have around 70 products in Poland available for clients. So our customers can invest in China, in gold, in natural resources, in Europe, in the US, in Asia. Mm -hmm. So we offer a broad spectrum and we also offer, and we call this local biased. So we offer Polish equity, Polish fixed income funds as well. Because as a Pole, as a German, as an as a American, you like to invest close to your heart, close to what you understand. So there needs to be a mixture of stuff you know and, and diversifying out of it. And what are the most popular in Poland? I mean, the most popular in Poland, we have a very uh, successful fixed income fund. So this is for the first time investor, which gives you low volatility and, and volatility is how much the fund moves around. Um, but we also have like emerging market debt funds, emerging market uh, equity funds as well. So mm -hmm. there is a mixture of that and it all depends on, on the customer, on the horizon of the customer, how long he wants to invest, where he should go. And this usually he will need to get advice by his advisor in the bank or uh, like an IFA. Mm -hmm. And how are you negotiating or navigating MIFID um, II? I mean, or maybe explain yeah. in a nutshell. <laughs> good, good point. MIFID II is the European regulator came into the market and said, we don't feel clients are getting the proper advice. And we also don't, we are not happy with the amount of fees they pay because it's not visible. And if clients don't know how much they pay, we want to change that. So they said, we want everybody to know if you invest 100,000 zloty, what is the fee level he has put in. Um, most European countries um, have implemented that in a very simple way, where the client will get a statement where it says in the end of the year, this is how much you paid out of your 100,000 whatever zloty, 
three, four, two, one percent was given as fees to the service you received. Um, the Polish regulator came in and said, we will not allow you to pay the distributor for services. So they said, we don't see value in this service. You can only pay them for what costs they have incurred. But they also need to make money. So if a distributor cannot make money, it's going to be very difficult for him to give proper advice. And we are at the moment working as the association of local funds. We are working with the regulator and the Ministry of Finance to try to Free change this yeah. to a European level so that the industry will not disappear because if you cannot make money, then nobody will work. And are you hopeful it will be resolved? We are working on that and we hope uh, changes will come over the next months. Okay. Um, you mentioned at the beginning that there have been, let's say, some hiccups um, in the last couple of years. Um, what are you doing to give confidence back to um, Polish investors who want to, you know, to encourage more, more investors? Yeah. As I said before, previously it was return, return, return. Um, nobody cared where he gave, whom he gave the money. It was all about past returns. And this has now changed where people are starting to look now, who is the asset manager we are giving money to? How long is he in business? Who are the people behind that? And I think that's very important for investors to look, how long is the company in business? And if you look at Franklin Templeton, we are doing this for 70 years, for over 70 years, and we are globally investing, and we are having the best risk management you can imagine. So I think this is becoming a more important um, issue for investors now to look who are they giving the money to mm -hmm. because the return number alone cannot guarantee you anything. Okay. Um, and what about technology? It's affecting every single business. Um, how is it affecting the asset management business? I think we have the perfect storm. So we have the perfect storm in the asset management industry. We have the perfect storm in the car industry. We have the perfect storm in insurance and banking. Um, technology is fundamentally going to change how everything works in, in this environment. We have um, people who have money and people who need money. And in between have been many toll gates. And I think over the next years you will see the people who need money merging together with the people who have, who have money and there's only going to be a digital token, but a blockchain. Isn't that potentially a danger for a company like it Franklin Temple? Danger. It's, a, it's the same danger uh, you like, yeah. like, like Kodak faced, um, they were on the forefront of digital imaging when digital imaging came up and today they don't exist anymore. So we need to make sure we stay relevant and we need to make sure that we invest in proper technology so that we stay relevant in five, ten years as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you just opened, uh, Franklin Templeton opened uh, an office in Poznan, yes. quite a large office. Um, is this, um, I mean, what, what does it say about your confidence say, in the Polish um, economy? I think it's a big commitment. Um, we built, or oh, we bought the building. Uh, we have 1,000 employees in Poznan. And when we started, I think 12 years ago, the first idea was to go to 500 employees. And at that time, we were not sure if we're going to reach 500 employees. And now we're at... Sorry, when was that? It was like 12 years ago. 12 years ago yeah. um, and the reason for this is the people. The people are so good that we didn't plan to go there. It was just the good people in Poznan built the business in that way, and it's an innovation hub for us. So is it an innovation hub for the whole of Europe? Or the whole of, whole of the Europe. The whole of the world, yeah. really? Yeah. So it started as a service hub. Yeah. So usually you start as a service hub, simple task, but then it's moving up on the value chain. It's now really an innovation hub. And if you look at the office, it really looks like a, like a campus. So there's a cantina, a kindergarten, a gym. So it's a, it's a very different office to offices we have usually at Franklin Temple. Okay, I think that's everything. So thank you very much uh, for giving us an insight into asset management business. Thank you. Thank you.